Now, to Newsmax New York. I've been waiting to do this all night. That's to bring in my good friend Steve Malsberg, who's the host of the eponymously named Steve Malsberg Show. Steve, you are never at a loss for words, and you know a few of these guys in and around the Big Apple. Uh, one guy there, Donald Trump. Uh, your take on the Donald tonight. Well, J.D., great to be with you. And uh, I think big news made uh, right near the, uh, the end of the debate, and that is when Donald Trump was asked uh, about his threat to run as an independent under certain conditions. And uh, he said that uh, he is committed to the Republican Party, and uh, he's learned to respect all those people up there on the podium with him that he's gotten to know over the months and time together, et cetera. And uh, he will only run as a Republican, is, is what he said. So I think that that might be a, a sigh of relief uh, being heard around uh, Republican circles and, and uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, GOP in general, uh, because, you know, you don't want another Ross Perot who's going to let Hillary in with 42 percent like Bill got in 1992. Um, as for the, uh, the, the debate itself, I don't think anybody really distinguished themselves or anybody really shot themselves in the foot either. I think uh, pretty much the status quo, I think Trump defended his immigration proposal to ban Muslims into the country. He kind of softened it a bit. Uh, Cruz said he disagreed with it, but he understands why Trump said it. Uh, I think the harshest criticism came from, frankly, insignificant candidates up there like Jeb Bush, who got into it with Trump a couple of times, and John Kasich. Um, I also think that uh, Carly Fiorina brought up a great point against Trump. When Trump said, uh, as far as the Mideast and all the money we've spent, the four to five trillion dollars on Middle Eastern wars, Trump said, I wish that money could have been spent right here in the United States on infrastructure. Uh, and, and Carly chimed in and said, out of turn, and said, that's exactly what Barack Obama says. I'm surprised you would say it. It didn't go any further, but I thought it was interesting. And I think Chris Christie, who I'm really getting tired of, uh, you know, looking in the camera, talking to the American people like it's the first time he's doing it every time he does it. Uh, I think he really hurt himself when he said to a hypothetical, if there's a no-fly zone and Russia violates the no-fly zone, would you shoot that jet down? Yeah, darn right, I'd shoot it down. First of all, you don't know, you don't say, you, 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 uh, he just came off and Rand Paul, who I really don't care for, said, if you want World War III, here's your candidate. Yeah, he, Chris Christie, who was irresponsibly threatening to shoot down Russian planes to the minute they violate the no-fly zone. And I think Chris Christie put his foot in his mouth, and that hurt him. Well, we will see about that. And one guy who will help us see over the long term in this debate is pollster John Zogby, who likewise joins us tonight via Skype from Utica, New York. Now, John, you are interesting because as an analyst for the eponymously named Zogby Analytics, you interview people and get the numbers as a pollster. But you also have your own thoughts on public policy and where we're headed. And you make no secret of the fact you're not exactly a Donald Trump fan. Taking that into account tonight, John, who did the best, who did the worst, and why? Uh, here's my top three. Uh, Marco Rubio, uh, again, very eloquent, very strong, uh, very capable of, of bonding with the uh, middle American. You know, the, he, he utilizes, I think, very well his, his immigrant roots. But he's also unflappable. Um, we were promised a little tete-a-tete -tete between him and Ted Cruz. We got it. It was a good one. Uh, that's why I rank uh, Ted Cruz as, as number two. I thought that, that he had a, a brilliant performance. He's generally regarded as the smartest guy in the room, and I think he came off as the smartest guy in the room. Uh, number three, for the most part, uh, Chris Christie was strong tonight. I couldn't agree with... Um, with Steve Malzberg more, however, that uh, that statement about shooting down a Russian plane was just totally um, uh, uh, irresponsible. And uh, in in that one liner, that was a one liner of the evening. I thought uh, when Rand Paul said, "Look, if you want World War III, you just found your candidate." And in that regard, I I, I think uh, Christie uh, was uh, was hurt. I thought Jeb Bush actually had a very strong performance, but I also don't think that there's anything that Jeb Bush can do to move in the polls. The first three candidates, uh, I, I rank them not only for their performance, but because I think Rubio gets a nationwide bump, 
as as uh, as Bush and Kasich sort of fall by the wayside. Cruz, I think, continues to get a bump and draws some more support from Ben Carson's failures and and also from Donald Trump. Uh, generally, a lackluster performance. Chris Christie, I think, probably helped himself in New Hampshire. John, you mentioned John? the name Jeb Bush. And it is interesting because again tonight, there was Jeb Bush versus Donald Trump. What we all expected in the earlier debates, again tonight, it was about the difference between them on immigrants and refugees. Let's listen, we'll ask you both for your reactions. I think Jeb is a very nice person. He's a very nice person, but we need tough people. We need toughness. We need intelligence and we need tough. Jeb said when they come across the southern border, they come as an act of love. You said in September 30th that ISIS was not a I, I, Am I talking or are you talking, Jeb? I'm you talking right back. now. I'm talking. You can go back. You're not talking. talking. You interrupted me, September 30th, Jeb. Are you going to apologize, said Jeb? No. Am I allowed to finish? Yes, one at a time. Excuse go ahead, me. Mr. Am I allowed to finish? Go ahead, Mr. Trump. So, little of your again, I, there, I, I, I know you're trying Governor to build Bush. up your energy, Please. Jeb, but it's not one, working One at a time. Look, look, look. We need a toughness. We need strength. We're not respected as a, you know, as a nation anymore. We don't have that level of respect that we need. And if we don't get it back fast, we're just going to go weaker, weaker, and just disintegrate. We can't allow that to happen. We need strength. We don't have it. When Jeb comes out and he talks about the border, and I saw it, and I was witness to it, and so was everyone else, and I was standing there, they come across as an act of love. He's saying the same thing right now with radical Islam. And we can't have that in our country. It just won't won't work. We need strength. Governor uh, Bush. Donald, uh, you're not going to be able to insult your way to the presidency. That's not going to happen. Uh, so it's interesting. Steve, you said it was Jeb with a fairly strong performance tonight, although it appeared at times he's walking on eggshells. Only about 15 seconds each. Steve, first to you, and then we'll let John wrap it up. Go ahead. Well, I think it's, it's foolish for Jeb to interrupt the way he did. It makes him look bad. It makes him look desperate. I think Donald Trump won that, uh, that uh, debate right there. And I think that line that they come here uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, it's an act of love is going to hurt him forever. And, and who's Jeb talking to? 68% of the Republican voters polled favor banning the Muslims from coming in. Who does Jeb think he's appealing to? What about it, John Zogby? 15 seconds. Oh. I think that, that Bush is appealing to uh, a, a moderate national audience and to, and to independents. It's not going to do him any good. I disagree, however, with Steve. I, I actually think that Jeb won that one with a very good one-liner against Donald. If, if you think you're not getting respected and you feel you're, you're, uh, you're getting hurt in this debate, imagine what it's like sitting in the Oval Office.